Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> today we'll be discussing uh, building contents in Blackboard using several of the uh, build content tools. Um, they are fairly similar in use. Um, we'll start with the first one. I'm going to go to my course content area in my Blackboard course. And I have this big build content button. Uh, are you guys seeing my screen okay? Um, no. no, we're not no. seeing anything shared. Um, I am is it me who's not opening something? No. Let me make sure I'm screen sharing. Let me stop the share and start again. Content, okay. Content. I think we got it. We got course content. Looks like okay. a Blackboard window here. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, perfect. <laughs> uh, I see Tatiana has joined us as well. Um, yes. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Tatiana. Um, uh, so uh, when I go to my course content, um, really most areas in Blackboard will have this build content button. Um, when you hover over it, you get a host of choices, and we're gonna right. we're gonna cover the real basic ones today. Um, and we'll start with creating an item. And uh, this, this option sort of does the same thing that all the other ones do, except everything's mashed together into one tool here. Um, when you create an item, the first thing you want to do is give it a name. Uh, and like an email, you want to keep your name short, succinct. Uh, this will be the title of the item as it appears in Blackboard to your students. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if we are setting up a syllabus or uh, let's say it, uh, an outline for a project, I'll call outline for the project. Uh, anytime you fill in this name area, you're, you're, you have the option to give it a color. And this is just the color that it'll appear on the screen to the students. Uh, I always recommend black because it is the easiest to read. Uh, but uh, you know, if you want to give your course a little flair, selecting an optional color is definitely up to you. <laughs> um, um, and the text area, this is where you're going to put the bulk of the information for your item that you're creating. Um, the text editor itself works very much like using a word processor. Uh, so if you're using Microsoft Word or something like that, uh, it's very much the same idea. You type your text in here. Um, and you have a host of tools at the top. Uh, to edit your text, uh, everything from you know the simple things like bold and italic, etc., underline. Uh, so if I wanted to make some bolding, I could. Um, and then uh, you have other options such as uh, pre-formatted uh, headings. And, um, you have a quite a big list of different fonts you could use. Uh, the default it defaults to Arial, but you can always use something different if you prefer Times New Roman or Vernana. Um, and of course, your your different font sizes, um, and then some simple tools for bulleting, etc. Um, uh, this button here sets your text color, so much like setting the color of the subject of the item. You can also change the color of the text. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Your cut and paste options are on the second row, uh, as, well, as well as justifications, you know, if you want it aligned to the right or centered, etc. Uh, you can indent here. Uh, you can even do sub and superscripts um, if you do anything with uh, mathematics. Uh, that is <laughs> very helpful. Um, and uh, other things you can do, um, the, you can add attachments into the item itself. So if, uh, um, I could, 
click on my attachment tool. And when you do something like this, anytime you try to insert a file into Blackboard, you'll get you'll uh, you'll have a, a series of options. Um, generally, you're going to browse your computer very much like if you were attaching an attachment to an email, um, or uh, you could browse your content collection. And content collection is uh, something fairly new to NEC uh, and we'll be discussing, we'll be holding webinars about using content collection more extensively later. Um, but for now, I'm just going to browse my computer. Um, and I had, boo -boo. Do, 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 do. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to attach my documents. <clears throat> Here's the name of the link to the file, which is the name of the file. I could edit that if I want to, but I'm not going to. Um, and uh, once I select my thing, I just submit it. Uh, and again, it wants to confirm that this is what I want to do. And I say submit. And here's my insertion um, as it'll appear to the students. Um, when they click on this, they'll, be, they'll get a uh, download dialog to download the file. Um, uh, but on top of that, you can also insert images. Um, you can insert video and audio files. Uh, uh, it's all pretty straightforward, all works very much the same. And these three options here to insert these objects right into your item, um, I'll be talking about other tools that do exactly the same thing, it's just a quicker simplified format, but we'll get there in a, a little bit. Um, you can also insert something called a mashup and uh, a mashup is uh, Blackboard has uh, an agreement with several uh, different uh, file sharing uh, platforms, including YouTube, uh, SlideShare, and Flickr. And you can use mashups to search for videos, images, and, uh, and slide presentations and make a direct link from your Blackboard course to those items on those platforms. Um, and I'll show you mashups in a little bit. Um, a couple of the really neat tools I really like to show you in the um, in the tool in the uh, text editor. The first one is the math editor. If you teach mathematics or science, this can be incredibly helpful. Uh, it is made specifically to uh, create mathematical formulas. Uh, as you would see them, say, in a textbook or, uh, or as the students would do them um, for homework, et cetera. Um, all your symbols are here, the, f the different formats, creating square roots. It gets very complex. Uh, a, lot of your, uh, a lot of your Greek nomenclatures in here. Um, so a lot of special characters that you don't normally use uh, in your normal text, you can access through here in the math editor. Uh, and the, it formats things very interestingly. Uh, as you can see, if I, uh, you could create very interesting looking formulas. And once you accept that, It'll insert it into your into your text. It takes a little practice to uh, to know where your text will get inserted. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes sometimes that it'll show up in places you don't expect, but uh, you can always go back and edit that uh, and move the text around. Um, you can also copy text from say, uh, say you want to create everything in a Word document and then copy it and bring it over into Blackboard. You can absolutely do that. And it should keep most of the formatting that you've created in Word. Uh, generally, when you do that, you're gonna wanna use your keyboard shortcuts uh, depending on which 
a web browser you use when you're using Blackboard, uh, the, the tools operated differently, but keyboard shortcuts will always give you your copy and paste correctly. Um, so if I had my Word document open and I copied everything from it and I came here to, to my text editor, I'd want to use control V for doing a paste. Um, and then all of my information would be pasted in. <clears throat> um, so that's the math editor. Uh, you also have a tool uh, that will show you uh, non-printed characters, very much like you do in Word. Uh, if you need to see where, uh, where carriage returns are or other things that hide in the background, you can use that tool to view those things. Uh, you could create block quotes, which formats your text into a smaller block that's sort of highlighted in the back. Um, it's a good way of, of presenting sort of a, a, like a, a quote from a text or something like that. Um, and of course you could do emoticons, which we all <laughs> love to put into our things these days. Um, uh, you, they have a fairly small uh, number of emoticons, but it's enough to get your messages across. Uh, and then it also allows you to put in special symbols. Uh, this comes in very handy uh, if you need to do uh, special notification for say, uh, representing euros or using pi. Um, uh, ampersand is included in here, um, uh, as well as like a copyright symbol, the registration symbol, trademark, those kinds of uh, symbols. Um, uh, it can be very, very easy to come in here and just grab something you need um, to uh, get the symbol that you want. Uh, you can also, there is also a table creation and editor. It's not super intuitive, but uh, it's a little easier to do and say Word and then copy your table over, but um, you can still uh, create tables in Blackboard's text editor. If you wanted to create a four column by three, col three row uh, table, you just, oop. And here's my table in here. It doesn't look much without, like much without uh, anything in it. But as you fill it in, uh, it'll, uh, it'll expand out for you. Um, and then it'll appear as a table very much like you would get in, uh, say, Word or even Excel, really. <clears throat> Um, and then you have a bunch of different table tools for editing uh, your columns or inserting more. Uh, and then the last couple of things I want to show you for this area, the HTML code view. Now, not everybody knows HTML and that's fine, but if you do happen to know a little HTML, this can be very useful if the formatting of your item that you're creating isn't appearing correctly, uh, or you've got extra space and you don't know why. If you toggle this button, you'll see all the code behind everything in your, in your item. Um, and if you're not a code user, that is fine. <laughs> um, but uh, if you do know HTML a little bit, you can come in here and edit the code directly. Uh, which can be very useful for getting your format exactly the way you want it to look or seeing where something might be broken if something's not working properly. Um, uh, likewise, there's a, a style sheet editor that'll allow you to change the f uh, formatting and colors and things like that. And style sheets are a little more advanced than HTML. Uh, but uh, again, another way to go and edit your text item with, uh, with code. Um, uh, the text editor does have a couple of uh, buttons over in the upper right-hand corner. 
Uh, you can preview what you're currently working on, uh, which gives you a little pop-up just showing you what everything will look like that you've entered so far. Um, the help button will send you to Blackboard's help area for this item, and it explains what each of the different uh, items mean in the uh, text editor. Uh, so if you see a button, you're not really sure what it means, you can click this help and you'll get a little uh, definition of what the button is actually supposed to do. <clears throat> and uh, this is a very useful button. Uh, if you're working on a very large item that you're going to insert into your course uh, and you need a lot of space to see it all, you can click this full screen button and it'll expand it out into a full screen. Um, there, then once you're finished, you can, you can click it again and it'll shrink it back down. Uh, if, uh, if you happen to come in and most of your text editor buttons are missing, it's because of this little chevron uh, in the upper right corner. It will expand and contract the uh, all the tools. <laughs> uh, sometimes you only need a few things, the basics. So if you contract it, you just get your basic text editing items. But if you expand it out, you get all the advanced features. Um, quick and easy to use. Uh, also, uh, so the text editor box also scrolls just like if you're using Microsoft Word. And there's a little dashed line in the lower right corner. If you click and drag that, you can expand the box a bit further if you want a little more space to work in without going into full screen mode. So these are all the options for creating text. Uh, for your item. An item, when I say item, it can be anything. Uh, you could be entering just text information here. You'd be putting in an outline. You could be putting in text with uh, attachments to files. You could insert a video with text. Um, But once you're finished doing all your editing of your item, uh, a little further down, there's an area called attachments where you, again, you can browse your computer to attach a file uh, if you have something you want to add to the item. So you have a couple of options. You can either insert the file directly into your item or you can attach it to the item. Either way, it'll show up when you're finished. Uh, when you're finished creating your item. In fact, I will attach the same file here and we'll get a good view of what it'll look like. <clears throat> um, after your attachments area, there's the standard options. And this standard options appears for everything you do when you build content, whether it's you're creating an item or you're create, if you're adding a video or a file, you're all, you always have this set of standard options. Uh, and it's usually the same three questions. Do you want uh, viewers to be able to uh, view your content immediately? Yes and no. Uh, if you set it to no, that's fine. The content will still be in your Blackboard course, but you can go back at a later date and make it available. Um, by selecting yes, it's immediately available to everybody. Uh, you can also track the number of views for the item. By default, it's a set to no, but you can set it to yes. And in your control panel for uh, your course, you'll be able to go to an area and see how many people have looked at the item um, and uh, there's a couple other uh, statistics it keeps, like number of downloads if it's a file, that kind of thing. And then uh, one of the greatest features they have is uh, the date and time restrictions. Uh, this is incredibly useful. If you have content that you want to only be available after a certain date, you could create it ahead of time and 
then you can set a date and time for it to automatically become available to your student users. <clears throat> so you can create your whole course outright, but if you don't want to overload them with information, you can set different things up to only show up after a certain date. Uh, very useful for when you're creating tests uh, and things like that. And that way you don't have to go in and manually turn them on and off. Uh, they'll immediately become available after a certain date and time. Uh, likewise, you can give uh, items a life expectancy. Um, so uh, again, very useful with exams, <laughs> um, but you can set a display until uh, date and time for an item. It'll be available for the students to access. Uh, and once that uh, milestone hits, that thing, that item will become unavailable to the users. And these two, these two options do not have to be used together. You can just simply set a display until, or you can set a display after, or you don't need to set either one. If you just uh, set uh, the option to permit users to view the content immediately, it'll automatically be available until you decide to take it, to turn it off or take it away. Um, I am going to allow my things to be immediately available to my users. Um, I don't really care about it being displayed after or until anything. So I'm going to submit my item I've created. And here is what I have just created. Um, this is the name I gave the item. And uh, once it's created, you'll be able to, if you need to go back and edit the item, you get a little chevron next to the name when you hover over it. When you click on that chevron, and this is true in Blackboard for just about everything you do, anytime you create something, it'll have a name and there's a chevron that will give you access to a, a menu that lets you edit an item, uh, make it immediately unavailable or available if it's unavailable already. <clears throat> as well as lots of other advanced options. You can also copy and move and delete. Um, so if I need to go back and edit this, I select edit and it brings everything back and I can make my changes. And once I'm finished, just submit again. <clears throat> um, likewise, um, some special items that get inserted into your, uh, into your item such as attachments, you have different options you can go and, uh, and edit if you need to. Uh, so here's an attached file I, I put in. If I need to edit the settings, I could go back and edit any settings for that, uh, for that item I just put in there. Um, my math uh, equations that I put in, if I needed to edit those, I could go and edit those as well. Um, now, if you remember, I <clears throat> inserted a, a file using the text editor tools. And that's what this is right here. But I also put in an attachment at the end, and here it is here. Um, they appear pretty much the same. Uh, when you use the attachment tool, it sort of shows up bolder, bigger. Um, but they both do exactly the same thing. They'll open up whatever you attach to the, to the item. Um, so that is creating an item. And this is, again, this is like the, the, the whole enchilada right here. This is a, uh, this tool, the create item does pretty much all the same functions of as all the other creating items do. Uh, it just wraps everything together in one package. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, uh, so uh, I'm going to move on to the next uh, content build item, which is uh, creating a file. This is pretty straightforward. Um, it's really just attaching a file to your content area. Um, Again, you give it a name um, and you select a color for the name to appear. 
Um, and again, you, you'll see this pretty much every time you do this. Um, and then you browse for the file you want to attach to the content area. And then you're, uh, so every item, everything you could create with the build content, <clears throat> you generally starts with the, the initial, give it a name, select a color, um, and then there's a, an options area. And the options are generally what's gonna be different for each build content item. Um, and then your standard options, which appear for everything, again, permit users to view the content, track the views, and select date and time restrictions for the item. <clears throat> for, but for creating a file, all we're going to do is attach a file to our course. So, um, so I have a new tutorial I want my students to, to view. I will browse and grab it from my computer. Again, you could also browse it from your content collection, um, which is something to be discussed on another day. Um, and once you grab your file, uh, you'll see the file name appear and the file type. Um, you could select a different file and it'll swap it out for this one. Um, and then I want to tell it whether I want it to open in a new window or not. Um, <clears throat> Oftentimes, it's good to open it in a new window. It all depends on how you want the presentation to be. Um, sometimes opening a file up inside Blackboard can cause the formatting to not work properly. Um, uh, I'm gonna leave it set to no uh, because it's a PDF, so it should work fine. Um, now, add alignment to content. You'll see, you'll see alignment uh, talked about in a lot of different options. Um, alignment is, uh, is associated with something called goals. Um, it's a big tool that Blackboard can use to uh, create a, a direction, a path for, uh, for a course, um, how they want uh, students to, to learn how, you know, what are the goals of courses? And it's, it's more of an overarching uh, item that gets created on an, a much higher level, um, not just on the course level. Um, currently, there's no uh, alignments created for NEC. Uh, so we're just always gonna leave that set to no, but eventually that may get used. And when it does, we'll talk about alignments even more. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna leave my options to, uh, for the file to not open in a new window. Um, I don't have any alignments I want to attach. Here's my standard options again. I'm gonna have it be immediately available. I don't need to track the number of views. Pretty straightforward, I've attached my file. I'm going to submit it. And so here's the file I've created. There's the name. When I click the name, it shows me the attachment that I added uh, onto it. Now here I've got it opening up inside Blackboard. <clears throat> if you choose the option to have it open in a new window, it'll open an entirely new uh, area um, without it being inside your Blackboard area. Uh, so, could I have done that using build item instead? Absolutely. Build file, just let me do it fast and easy. Um, and <clears throat> all the rest of these options, build audio, images, video, web links, you can do all of these things just by creating an item. Uh, they're just faster ways to get something up really quickly and easily. Um, without having to deal with the text editor or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about audio and video. They work pretty much the same. Um, again, you wanna give it a name, find a file to attach. Um, in this case, we're, we're creating a video file. So we want to browse for a video file. And then uh, again, at the bottom, you have your standard options, 
uh, permitting users to view the content immediately, date restrictions, etc. cetera. Uh, but again, what's different is in the middle, the video options. These are options specific to the video. And this is the nice thing about using the create uh, video, create audio. Um, when you use create item, you have to sort of uh, go through sub menus to set all these options. If you create uh, a video directly, um, you get the options presented to you in a clear format, easy to use. <clears throat> um, and options are going to be different depending on what your uh, which tool you're using for video. Uh, you're offered a choice of using the original dimensions of the video or doing custom uh, dimensions, and whether you want to, the video to automatically start when the student uh, clicks on it, uh, whether you want it to loop. Uh, and again, aligning it to contents. Um, uh, so let's grab a video. This is a pretty fun course. We should check this out. Um, we're going to browse for my video. And where did I put it? Uh, or did I put it back in my AC folder? Do, 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 do. I lost my video. Well, that's okay. You get the idea. Um, I would browse my computer, find a video, attach it, uh, and then it would, uh, once we submit it, oh, file must be attached. So you can't really, um, like, uh, you can't really do something by accident. So if uh, you're missing a file, uh, it'll tell you. There's my full file. Uh, so here's a file I want to attach. Now there are things to think about when you're uh, uploading video files. If it's a large file, it might not load properly. Uh, it might take a very long time. <clears throat> this particular video is 39 seconds, so it didn't take too much to load. Um, here's my video. It shows it to you in a nice window. I hit play and it plays the video. Um, and then the student can, can uh, make it full, full screen. They have some small options. Uh, they can also download the video. Uh, and that's something to be aware of. Anytime you use the, uh, the build video or audio or image or any of those, um, anytime you use those, the student will always have the option to download that item. Um, if for some reason you don't want them to, um, you might be able to insert it using the create item instead, um, but uh, you might instead want to link to the video if it's up on YouTube or something like that, instead of actually inserting it into your, into your content if you don't want them to be able to download it. <clears throat> uh, audio works very much the same way. Uh, you see it has the same kind of format a name, finding the file. It's got audio options that are pretty much the same, almost the same as video options, whether you want it to auto start, loop, uh, align it to contact, context, to content. Uh, what's really nice about <clears throat> the audio area is you can include a transcript uh, for your audio file. Uh, and this is a nice thing to do for uh, accessibility reasons. If a uh, student, if you have a student who is hearing impaired, uh, including a transcript would allow them to read uh, what is uh, what is being said in the audio file uh, instead of having to find some other way to to uh, get what's going on with it. Um, go back to my content. <clears throat> um, but 
again, you could see that, you know, creating audio and video items, you could also do that just by uh, creating a regular item. It's just quicker and easier. Um, uh, image, pretty much the same way. Uh, you give it a name, you find your image that you want. Uh, now image has a few extra options. I'm gonna browse for my image. Once I've selected my image, uh, now we've seen this uh, previously already uh, with uh, inserting uh, other files. It shows me the name of the file, the file type. Um, now with an image, uh, you get a field that says alt text. And what that is, is again, this is for uh, accessibility. Uh, if somebody is using a uh, a browser reader, uh, if they're visually impaired or something like that, uh, the alt text is a good way to uh, let them know what the image actually is. Um, um, and if they have a uh, browser reader, it will read them the alternate text. Um, you can also give it a longer description uh, if you want to include more information, if there's more going on in the image uh, that needs to be uh, relayed to the user. And then again, image options, pretty straightforward stuff, whether you want the dimensions to be the same, uh, give it a border or not. Uh, you can also make the image a link uh, if you want somebody to be able to go to a website by clicking on the image, you could put the URL of the, of the web location right there. Um, uh, you can also have the image open, uh, the uh, URL open in a new window uh, if you make it a link. And then our standard options, which were All right, now. <clears throat> All right, and here's the image I've selected. I kept it its original dimensions, so it's a fairly large picture. Um, if I had made it a link, you'd be able to click on it and it would bring you to a different uh, site, but that's, that's it. And you, again, anything you put in, there's always a chevron associated with it that lets you edit that item. <clears throat> Um, there's two more things we want, I want to talk about today. One is creating web links. This is probably the most straightforward item <laughs> there is uh, for creating. Um, you give it a name. Oops. Caps lock on. <clears throat> and then you put in the URL where you want the link to go to. So we're going to go to Google. Um, you have an option here when you create a web link uh, that says this link is to a tool provider. Um, Blackboard uh, works with several other third parties such as Pearson, McGraw-Hill, Cengage. Um, those uh, those providers create other tools uh, that you can use for your students um, to teach your courses. Uh, and oftentimes uh, you have to log into their sites to access their materials and their, uh, and their <laughs> assignments, et cetera. Um, there are uh, tools that allow us to connect those various uh, uh, third parties to your Blackboard course. So, uh, so uh, if you're using a product from Pearson and we have the, the, the learning tool uh, installed on Blackboard, you can connect to your Blackboard course to your Pearson course and all the 
uh, content from Pearson will be provided to Blackboard and, and vice versa. And so if you grade something in Pearson, it'll automatically get uploaded to Blackboard or you can have the activity from Pearson show up in Blackboard. Um, and this is what partly what this uh, box for creating a link to a tool provider is. It allows you to <clears throat> create a link directly to uh, one of these third parties. Um, there are other ways to do it as well, um, which is actually a topic of another webinar we'll be doing later on this summer. Um, a description of the URL. Um, Uh, it can be as much or as little as you want. You see you have the text editor tools. Um, you could put a link in if you have a lot to say about it. Uh, you know, uh, if, it's, if it means, if it's, you know, if it's a, uh, something historical and you want to talk about the history of it, you could put all that information in the description area and it will appear with the link. Um, you could also attach a file to go with the link. Um, and then you need to set your options, whether you want it to open in a new window or not. And then our standard options, uh, you know, do we want date and time restrictions, et cetera. And so uh, my description, this is where you go to find information. Here's my link. Right here, this is Google. When I click on it, it opens the Google link we put created. Um, one thing I will point out, now that I've created several items, you'll notice that each of them has a different icon. Uh, and the different icons mean different things. Um, uh, the sheet of paper with the world is a link. Uh, it's a reference to the World Wide Web. Um, and then the, an image has an image icon. Video has a little piece of film. Um, and then regular items sort of look like a sheet of paper with a picture on them. Uh, the icons are there for your, your students and for you to quickly you know, assess what they're looking at. Um, if you forget that you created something as, uh, as a link as opposed to an item, you, if you look at the image, you could tell the difference. Um, so creating uh, files, audio, uh, file items, audio items, images, videos, web links, they all are just quick and easy ways to create those items. But you can always, by default, just do the generic create item. And you can do all of those things right in there. Um, but these are just quick and easy ways to get them out. Um, so real quick, I want to talk about mashups. Uh, and a mashup, like uh, I mentioned earlier, is a, is a tool that works directly with Flickr, SlideShare, and YouTube. And it allows you, oh, I'm gonna create build content and a YouTube video. It allows you to browse, uh, for instance, YouTube directly. So if I enter my search item now, this doesn't let you go directly to a specific video. It lets you browse videos. If you know that a certain criteria will get you to where you want to go, it's a good tool to use. Um, so I've entered a search item. I clicked go and it displays a number of items for me. These are all videos direct, coming directly from YouTube. Uh, you get a handful of information about the video, uh, the duration, uh, it's, it's specific link. So this is a quick way to get a link to a video if you need it real quick. Um, and then the, the, the default uh, description of that video as it appears on YouTube. Um, if you want, you can select that video to insert into your content area. <clears throat> and then it, 
pre-populates some information based on the information that came from YouTube. Uh, so the name is the name as it appears on YouTube. I could change that if I want to. Um, uh, uh, you can add more to the description field if you want. Um, and then you get some mashup items, whether you want it to be viewed as a thumbnail, which is a small, uh, which make it appear as like a little small uh, image like we were just looking at. <clears throat> you can have a text link with the player, which will allow you to click on the link and go directly to the video on YouTube, or you can embed the video directly into your course content. Um, uh, I am going to also select show the YouTube URL. Um, and you can also show or hide the YouTube information from your students. <clears throat> Again, you can attach a file to go along with the video if you want to. And then your standard options. Um, I will submit the item. And if I scroll down, here it is. The video is embedded into my course. Um, it's got the YouTube information. I've included the YouTube URL so that or my students could go directly there if, if for some reason it doesn't work properly in the course. Um, but uh, the mashup tool uh, is very nice for doing things like that. You can do YouTube videos, slide share presentations, which is very nice, and Flickr photos. Um, but I've gone a couple minutes over our time. I want to give you guys, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and ask. Hi, okay. I loved a lot of this. It really inspired me because I was specifically kind of stuck on um, some certain documentaries and videos that I do indeed want to have the students review this fall. Mm -hmm. So my question to you would be, um, and in terms of publisher rights, et cetera, as we send them for a short clip on YouTube, I say something that's only 15 minutes long. It sounds to me that it's still best to be done via mashup as opposed to in um, some of the standard add to file build content text area, correct? Like go to mashup for for something like that. Yeah, so for your longer videos, <clears throat> um, and, then, and that's really, I mean, that's the, that's the, our, our trend these days, right? Uh, things are going to be hosted on YouTube. Uh, and for longer videos, definitely use the YouTube uh, mashup or or link to the YouTube video. Um, uploading the video directly to your course content can, uh, can take a long time if the video is longer than say, you know, uh, five or 10 minutes. Uh, they, it's a big file once you get to that point. But uh, um, as far as, as copyright issues go, um, that is, that's definitely an area everybody ever always needs to tread carefully in. Um, so it's always best to use videos that you know are public domain or, or of your own making. Oh, great. I'm so glad that you just actually said that. It spurs on a question. One of the things that, let's say, for example, a one hour documentary on the evolution of, um, you know, true happiness or something that was put out by National Geographic. Mm -hmm. Normally on campus, they make me go get the, uh, the DVD at the library uh -huh. in order to show it in the classroom. <laughs> Um, but well, how do you best, what, what hints do you have for me with incorporating it this fall? Um, I mean, it's some, something like that, I, I guess it really just boils down to doing some research, um, finding out uh, who controls the content, um, whether it's considered public domain or not. Um, there's a lot of items that uh, are free to share with you know, with students and uh, some things are made specifically just for educational use. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, and really that just involves doing some due dil diligence and making sure that you're not uh, breaking any copyright rules. May I offer a comment there? This is Tom. Absolutely, Tom. Um, the, I recall when Kathy first did that, there was a budgetary restriction 
that limited them, limited them, the library, I mean, to the DVD option. Uh, it would be a higher license cost to get something that we could move around on, on the internet. Um, just a suggestion that that might be a management issue as far as budgeting goes, that um, there, there may be a need for funding to provide more latitude in those kinds of video presentations so that the library wouldn't be forced to default to the lowest possible cost, which in her case was, yeah, we'll get the DVD and you show it one time at a time. That's a that's a great um, that's a great item to bring up uh, to Sharon Sable, um, who uh, who you know <laughs> uh, manages our uh, manages our online department. Um, uh, possibly talking to her and and uh, and and the librarians to maybe uh, come up with a solution that way. Maybe a, a library video hosting program or something like that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, that'd be cool. And now I'm also permanently stuck on trying to figure out a backwards counting summation nested within another summation. I'll find, <laughs> I will find the application. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> uh, is there, uh, are there any other questions or? I did want to just say that there are videos available, which I'm sure you're, you're familiar with, through the NEC library. So maybe there's something you can find that's comparable that we already have access to as part of our NEC library collection. Well, that's true. Tatiana is a, a great resource for everybody. Uh, she's been working uh, with the online program for a while now. and. Uh, she has a lot of knowledge. <laughs> well, and I'm gaining more, thanks. <laughs> quick, uh, quick statement, too, about the colors and adding color to your course that um, you might want to be very cautious about that also because of accessibility. Yes, absolutely. Um, anything you put up into your course content, you always want to keep accessibility in mind. Um, try to... Anytime you pr you get, you post media, <clears throat> whether it's audio or video, try to uh, if you can present it in a secondary format. Um, we are wor working uh, to uh, turn on a tool called uh, Ally, which will help with that. Um, which will help create, uh, say, transcripts of videos or audio files, um, but the more versions of uh, an item that you can present to the users, the better. Uh, sometimes it's not possible, um, but uh, always try to keep that in mind. Uh, not all students have the same, uh, uh, the same abilities as others. So uh, some need uh, text as opposed to audio. Um, well, thank you for that, Tatiana. That's uh, all right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, and uh, one more question. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. So, you mentioned the icons and how the icons look if, depending on which format you use. Yes, but you would, would you have that same icon um, options if you use item? Uh, so an item, uh, so when you create an item, it creates, its, it's uh, icon is specific to, cre for, to create item. Uh, now, if you put attachments and video and everything into your item, you'll still only get the item icon. Um, if you use the specific create video, create audio, uh, uh, build tools, they have their own icons. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. So you can put video into an, a regular item, but it won't have it won't have a video icon. It'll still just have the item icon. Oops. Okay. Right. And I just just a little quick hint from you. Yeah. Um, the way that you set the uh, availability, the parameters of those dates, even as you went into just building this particular content right now. 
how does it mesh when it's embedded in within, say, for example, I'm intending weekly folders and yep. in the weekly five folder module breakdown that um, I'm going to already each week only goes available or live for, you know, the week or two that it's going to be. So would it supersede what it, it, within that weekly folder or module the course content what that's I a, put in that's there. a great question um the so uh the parent content uh the parent container if you will uh, uh that's the, a good one parent <laughs> the parent container will will be uh will always be will always supersede the uh, the children so uh if you have everything in a week one folder or week two folder, uh, and you have week two turned off because you don't want anybody to access that material yet. Even if all the items inside week two are available, they still won't be able to access them until that week two container is turned on. That's very clear. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, all right. Any other questions? Thank you, Rob. That was right. awesome. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for attending. Um, I feel better each time. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we'll be discussing more uh, more items in Blackboard all summer long. So please continue joining us, and uh, and we'll, we will also be recording all these webinars. So if you miss any, uh, you could go back and uh, and view them later. Uh, we just need to get uh, our our host all squared away. <laughs> and then once we do, we'll send out links and whatnot for everybody. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Everybody have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.